the Bible says believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved you and your household and your household why are people not thinking about their household yo you and your household so sometimes we're like oh my goodness I got saved but how about my unsafe family members yo d don't worry do not worry God planted you there to shine the gospel light, to be the firstborn among many brethren, to shine the gospel light to all those around you, those, your neighborhood, your co-workers, your, all those people around you. And if you believe, if you believe, you will believe with your whole heart, mind, soul, and might. When you believe with all that you have, your family is going to start noticing. Your co-workers is going to start noticing. When you spend a lot of time in the Bible, when you spend a lot of time in the closet with Jesus, when you start looking like Him, when you start speaking like Him, and He speak words that get people's attention, all right? Yo, you're the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God will start coming out of you and people are going to start noticing. Your family is going to start changing. And believe me, in the beginning, it's going to be so, so hard because Jesus says your enemies are going to be those in your household. Yo, that's why he says you got to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you because guess what? They might be your own mom and dad and your own brother and sister, your own cousin, whoever's living with you, you know? Sometimes the only comfort you'd get is from your dog or from, though I prefer you go get it from the Holy Spirit because he is the comforter. But yes, when people start looking at you with those dark eyes, they're just so offended by you, then you'll start you start realizing there's a dire need for the gospel. Yo, sometimes you'd have family members that are just super old, like your uncles or your aunts. Like my uncle is like almost over 60, 70, and I asked him just like yesterday, hey uncle, have you heard about Jesus before? And he's like, no. And I'm like, oh, come over here right now. I don't want you to die without knowing Jesus, you know? So yeah, remember, so, God can take your mistakes, even the stuff that you like. No one can preach a perfect gospel, okay? Could you imagine someone going around bragging that they have the perfect gospel? Like, oh my goodness. Only the Holy Spirit can preach the perfect gospel, all right? So what you give to God, even if it's like a tiny little bit, your tiny little five loaves of bread and two fish, God could do a lot with that. But if you don't do nothing, God cannot do anything with that. You know, like, you got to do something. You got to, like, and you might be wondering, where can I start? I don't even know how. You start by praying. Like, for example, you're like, how do I minister to this person? Simple. You pray to Jesus first, and he will give you the opportunity. And not just that, he will prepare the heart of the person who's going to listen. Oh, my goodness. It's so amazing. Remember, he holds people's hearts in his hands. Like, guys, that's power. So you just be like, Lord Jesus, I want to preach to this person the gospel. Please prepare their hearts. Please tell me how to minister to them. Please tell me the right opportunity and the right time. And believe me, the Holy Spirit will kick in and he will help you. And only then will you succeed. If you try to preach out of your own flesh, whoo. <laughs> but still, God will still use that, okay? Even if you tried and you failed miserably, God will still use that. And guys, when you start preaching the gospel, yes, you're, you're going to lose some things. <laughs> okay. You're going to lose worldly things, all right? People are going to start attacking you. It's, it's a dangerous thing. Come on. It's a dangerous thing. Jesus started preaching the gospel for three years. And what happened to him? Oh my goodness. But this should not deter you guys. Because there are a lot of people out there. Who are out there in the jungles. In the mountains. Risking their lives to bring the gospel to the lost. And us we live here. In a country with religious freedom. Why are we not taking this chance. This chance. Oh my goodness. I pray to fire of the Holy Spirit would reach into your souls and burn you up and be like, ah, don't miss a day of class. Don't be like, oh, today I need a break from God. <laughs> what? You need a break from God? Oh my goodness, you'd stop breathing. Oh my 
lying. Okay, you go to class every single day. Read the Bible every single day. I know it sounds like a dictator, but come on. If you want to survive in a world where the devil is trying to eat you, he eats faith for breakfast. You wake up in the morning, the devil's right there, and he's like, I'm going to ruin your faith today. Okay, that's how Satan works. He, that's why jo Joshua and Moses, they wake up early in the morning before the sun even rise. Okay, like, I'm still trying to work on that myself. It's hard. <laughs> so they would do that because they know they have an adversary. They know that they need to conquer the morning and they need to conquer the evening they need to conquer the whole day okay like because we have a crazy adversary and he is not sleeping he is not stopping and he's going to do anything to stop the kingdom of god but guess what he can't okay and it's time for the army of god to rise up this ain't no baby daycare anymore this is like the battle we are the army of god right now on this planet earth and the angels are standing around ready to help us through anything dude did you know you could call for angels to come help you you know whenever you feel weak whenever you feel you could pray to god um father send angels to help me send people to help me speak your word to me comfort my soul like you have there's more for you then against you so yes preach the gospel and if you don't know how that's okay if you are just born again and you feel like i don't know how to do anything just yet it's okay spend time with jesus and he will teach you just don't miss a day of class okay don't miss a day of class because you need that training you need that training so much you need to survive in this world it's not easy being a Christian. It's not sitting in an armchair going to heaven. It's a battle. And you got to sing in the middle of the battlefield because guess what? That is what Christians do. We worship in the middle of our pain. We worship in the middle of our distress. And we are awesome. We are the church of Jesus Christ. Come on, we are awesome. Now let's start acting like it. Okay. See y'all later, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>